Thank you. Want to be ready, God. I want to be ready. With. I want to be ready, my dear. I want to be ready. 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 Ready, Continue to pray in your background. Just continue to keep your heart in a prayerful mood. Hallelujah. We come to the end of this segment. My God Almighty, we're going on to another segment. Hallelujah. To hear the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bless God this morning. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord, and at this time, I'm going to introduce to you to Tham, my God, Elder Devon Edwards, mighty God, and the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, Elder Devon Edwards, and the Holy Ghost, to break the bread of life, my God, for us this morning, in the name of Jesus, Elder Edwards, and the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, Elder. I bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Yvonne. My God, what a word. Thank you. Amen. What a word she brought forth this morning. Those of you who were not aware of the rapture, sure got a good picture of what the rapture is all about. And I'm so happy to hear you. But of Zion, we're coming back from way back in God. Way, way back in God. <laughs> I would never tell you how way back we're coming from, but we're coming from way back. Am I speaking to say what? You are speaking, Elder, way back. <laughs> way back. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. So yeah, are you see seeing you. my share screen, guys? Are you able to we're see seeing your screen, but we're not seeing you. You want to see me too? Yes, of course. Uh, let me see if you want to see me. Okay, here am I. Yeah, there you are. Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So go back to my screen. Uh, Where's my screen? So I'm happy to be here greeting um, Prophetess Bolton, Prophetess Stoddart, and all you wonderful people. I'm so happy to be here one more morning to be able to break the bread of life and to impart the word of God. It's it's a real pleasure for me. I love the word of God. I love sharing the word of God. And um, as we embark this year, we're going to be looking at some, some thing that we already did before and some things that we think is profitable. As we look at this end time study, we want to make sure that you have an idea as to where we're coming from. So you'll be better able to appreciate where we're going. And so I hasten to mention the importance of uh, the historic perspective of the end time study, because if, if, if you open the Bible against the newspaper these days, it's actually as if you're reading them side by side because the prophecies are being unfolded right before our eyes. And um, the major news medias are carrying stories and are even quoting scriptures and showing um, the origination of this event that is now happening in our time that was prophesied hundreds of years ago. And the truth of the matter is prophecy and the authenticity, the authenticity of scriptures is based on prophecy, how um, prophecy substantiate the things that were said that have passed, the prophecies in the past that have been fulfilled, and the prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled to come to the front. So my time is limited, so I'm going to hasten to look at my topic before me this morning, and that is Daniel 7th week. And as we look into this, I want you to open your mind to understand that some of these things that we're doing is going to come by revelation. And, and so God will have to give you inspiration and, and revelation for you to get a good picture of it. So here we have a, a synopsis and this, this um, Clarence Arkin. He has done a tremendous job of producing a number of end time script drawings like these. And um, it's, it, it, is, it gives us a beautiful picture of where we want to present it today. Because there are other, there are other views to how Daniel 70 weeks end, including the fact that some people believe that it has already been fulfilled and there's no, there no waiting on no 70th. There's no waiting on no 70th week. Um, but it has already been fulfilled as far as back as um, Antioch Epiphany offered a swine on the altar and desecrated the altar. And some go as far back as that to say that it was fulfilled. But we're embracing this theory of a period between the 69th week and the 70th week. And we believe that's the period we're in now. So this is a snapshot of all that will happen from the times of the Gentile and to the end of the Gentile and ultimately to the end of the age and into the millennium. So what are we talking about scripture? Daniel chapter nine, that's where we are. Daniel chapter nine, because we don't want you to believe that it's just a theory that we come up with or Dr. Larkins or Dr. Schofield comes up with or historians come up with, but we want to see how it relates to scripture. So Daniel chapter 9, verse 20 says, And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sins and the sins of my people Israel, before the Lord my God, for the holy mountain and for my God, 
Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the previous vision, in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation, and he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skills and understanding. And at the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. So if you go in the first chapter, first few verses of Daniel chapter 9, you will see that Daniel had looked into the book of Jeremiah and realized that based on the time that they went into captivity, it should be um, a time near to when they should be, the, the, um, the land should have been restored from its desolation because there was a 70 year prediction. Daniel wanted to know um, what is going to happen because they had failed to they had failed to give the land its rest for 10 Sabbaths. And so God gave them the punishment of being in Babylon. And their captivity in Babylon was primarily based on God giving the land its rest. Because the Lord told them that the land was to rest every seven years. And they, they didn't rest the land. And God gave the land its rest by causing them to be taken out of the land. And the land remained desolate. No wonder that land is so is so fertile now, because even as the Bible prescribed and described, the, the desolate lands and the, the, uh, the desert lands are now so fertile that the production of fruits and vegetables from those lands that were desert land are so great because God knew and set certain things in motion. Um, he set some things in motion because he understands the, 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 um, how nature operates. And so he said, there is a time that you need to rest. Amen. There is a time to rest. Six days and God rested. And so God made your body to, ex to get rest. And if you don't allow it to get rest, then you will immediately open the door for sicknesses to take your body because your body needs rest. It needs to replenish. The cells need to replenish. The, the organs need to, to cease and to cease function so that they can, as it were, replenish and, and, and cleanse and all of that. So those of you who are going 24 seven, you need to remember that you are human. I'm only human and you need some rest. So Daniel, 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 Daniel's land needed rest and God put it on forced rest. Don't make God put it on forced rest. Take some time away. Everybody need a little time away, amen to get rejuvenated and just to focus on your health. Um, I didn't plan that, so take it as it comes. Bishop S. U. would say, spit pin in the wheel. So Daniel got, Daniel was praying and seeking God as to what was um, going to happen. And this is the answer that he got while he was praying, seeking, confessing the sins of his fathers and himself, that God sent Gabriel Archangel Gabriel, who was the angel that um, we saw most time bringing the message, a messenger, the angel of communication, somebody said. And he says in verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most high. Now we could spend the whole next week looking at each of those, but our emphasis is just on the time frame to today. Know therefore and understand that from the going forward of commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the walls even in trouble some time. Verse 26 of Daniel chapter 9. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, 
and unto the end of wars and desolation is determined. Verse 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abomination he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poor upon the desolate. So that's the scripture in relation to where my focus will be. And here I have a pictorial view again as to how the 70 weeks, starting with Daniel chapter 2, 5 to 8, we see the beginning of the 70 weeks. Um, we're going to explain a little more what is meant by um, weeks. But this is another pictorial view of the 70 weeks. And you will see the first seven weeks. You see a year, a period of uh, silent years. And then you see the cross. You see the advent, Jerusalem being destroyed, cross, right? The cutting off. You see Jerusalem being destroyed. And we see that we're in a period, uh, which is the uh, gap, we call it in prophetic terms, a gap between the 69th week and the 70th week, right? If you're following on the screen, you, you see I'm trying to point to you. So we're in a present age now, but yet still we expect another week, which would be Daniel's 70th week, will come divided into two part, and the second half of those three and a half years will be regarded as, as a great tribulation. This will end with the Battle of Armageddon, the introduction of the millennial period, and then we have the new heaven and the new earth. All right, so moving right along. So when you see the word weeks in the, um, in the prophetic terms, um, it is often um, not as we would have thought of seven days. But as we look into it, we'll find out a little more that it's not, a seven, it's not seven days, but a seven period of seven, right? So it's seven years rather than seven days. And so 70 weeks should be 70 times seven, 490 years, right? Um, the period will commence with the going forth of to build, build and restore the walls, Jerusalem, and that we find in um, that in, in Nehemiah chapter two, and Artaxerxes gave them the resource to carry it out. So if you want a little more information on the um, idea of seven being seven, period of seven, weeks being period of seven, you can look to Leviticus chapter 25, one to five, as Shabbat was also or literally known, or Eptads were literally known as period of seven. In light, it's as much like you say, a, a decade, you know, it's 10 years, or a century, a hundred years. Well, in this sense, the, the word that was translated weeks really speaks of period of seven years. So you can look into Leviticus as an idea as to how it came about, Leviticus um, 25, from 1 to about verse 8. But let's move on then. So Daniel, Daniel's 69 week was outlined in the first given part, where it says that it shall be 7 and 62. Seven weeks and 62. So we believe the seven weeks began where? with Nehemiah, Nehemiah, who was a cup bearer and heard of the news of how the land was desolate. And he wasn't even in embracing the idea of God about to do something like Daniel was, but he became sorrowful because what God does is that he will give us a burden for a particular thing. And that burden that he puts on us is just that we are bothered about the thing. So we, 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 we bear a heavy um, feeling about the thing, the burden. And so Nehemiah, when he got the news of how Jerusalem was scattered and how the walls were broken down and how the wild animals were coming in and how they were exposed to all kinds of danger, he had a burden that the burden was of such that it's, it changes very countenance. He might have been a chirpy fellow, but no, he was before the king, and nobody was to go before the king. And um, I'm sad. 
and he was before the king and by virtue of what was happening, the thing that was bothering him, the king read it on his face. You know, some people wear their feelings on their face. So the mad they know they're mad. And if they're happy, you know they're happy. And so it was during this time then that the king authorized with his wife sitting beside him, and that being that it was going to be law, authorized him to go back and to rebuild the walls. Um, and we see that rebuilding would take a period of seven weeks or 49 years. By virtue of this, what we would think is that there were times of lapse, there were times of recovery, um, but ultimately at the end of that period, then we had the first of these seven weeks that is mentioned. The next 62 weeks will go as far as the, the Messiah being cut off. So the first 69 weeks are from the going for the commandment to the time when we have finally the cutting off of the the um the cutting off of the prince. And so if you look at my take screen, you'll see um the, the the historian says that the seven weeks really began at 445 BC, right? 445 BC. It was in the 20th year of the King Artaxerxes, as he sat that Nebuchadnezzar had this, this, this talk with him. Amazingly, everything happened precisely as Gabriel had told Daniel, and it, that it would. The streets and the walls of Jerusalem were built 49 years. And interestingly, you remember that, as it said, it shall be built in troublesome times. And had it not been that Nehemiah was so determined, the wars would have um, stopped because they, they came under criticism. They came under um, despise. They laughed and said, "Those war, what are they doing? The walls that they're building will just blow down. We can just blow on it like the big, the, 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 pig, the little pig that built their house made by straw. We'll just huff and puff and blow it down. And they, when they saw that the wall continued, they tried to bring Nebuchadnezzar to a meeting, a conspiracy they had so that they could probably kill him or imprison him or something. But Nehemiah, who knew what God told him, said, I am doing a great work and I can't come down. Ain't got no time for idols. And so God will give you a vision and people will not see your vision nor share your vision or despise you because they think that you're crazy. But when God give you a vision, be assured that he will make the provision. It's not always going to be easy. Amen. It's not going to always be easy, but God is going to be with you right throughout the time. And that's the beauty. That as, as Moses said, Lord, if you don't go with me, I'm not going. And so if God give you that instruction, have confidence that God is going to see it through. So in a summary, the first six to nine weeks is from the time that the command was given to the time when Messiah the Prince is cut off. And this Messiah the Prince we believe is Jesus. So between after that time, there'll be yet one week which is a seven year period. And this last week, which is described as Daniel's 70th week in Daniel 9, 27, will be divided, it says, into two periods of uh, equal parts, three and a half years or 42 months, we see mentioned in Revelation. And in that first three and a half, there will be some interesting things because there will be a, a peace there is a peace and a peacemaker like the world has never seen. He will rise with a white horse, with a bow, without any arrow, and his aim and his achievement will be that he will bring peace to the Middle East. And that peace that he brings will cause Israel to sign an agreement with him. And he would allow their sacrifice and all that they need to be done, um, their worship, until the end of those first three and a half years of bliss, when the true picture, the true image of 
the revised Roman beast comes into four and he now caused the oblation and their sacrifices to cease and sets himself up in the temple and demand worship. And now in any time you mess with a, a Jews worship, you mess with them. And as there are some saints, don't mess, mess with everything else, but don't mess with my worship. Don't mess with my prayer time. Don't mess with my, you know, so so this was it. Once they start messing with the idea of worship, they were messing with the wrong thing. And that is what will cause that revolt. And ultimately, God will come to fight for Israel at the Battle of Armageddon. Are we seeing it on my picture? First year and a half, everything, peace, nice. When they think it's peace and safety, sudden destruction. So Jesus said, I come in my, my father's name and he received me not. But if another come in his own name, he shall he receive. So you have Christ. And anytime you have Christ, there's always a antichrist. You have church, you have the devil church. So there's always trying to run parallel with the true image. And a lot of people are blinded to the extent that they don't know that they're lost and they're on their way to a Christless eternity because the devil has transformed himself in an angel of light. And some of the things and the, the riches that come because you're a part of these groups and the wealth and the prosperity that comes, you think that it's God, it's not God, it's the devil that is that is um, engineering this, that is pouring this. And the devil don't work for nothing. The devil is not Ali Button. So the devil will require your soul. And it's a hard price to pay because what can a man give in exchange for his soul? What can you give in exchange of your soul? So there is a gap. We mentioned the gap between the, the 69th and the 70th week. And that gap is our present age that we're in. Um, Romans 11 verse 25 says that God blindness in part is up to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be coming. Blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentile be coming. Because in this time, in this age, God is picking out from among the Gentiles a people for his name. That's Acts chapter 15 verse 14. Acts chapter 15, verse 14. So Daniel didn't see the church in his vision. Um, as it were, they say that prophecy is mountain peak vision. They don't see the valley, the mountain peak. It's like God make you a promise that he's going, you're going to be this. He, he, doesn't, he didn't show you the, the journey in between. So you think it was going to be, well, now I am a shepherd boy. Tomorrow, having been anointed, I'm going to be king. But David had to wait himself. When, when, when Saul was still on the throne for many years after his anointing, and he had to wait his turn. So sometimes God shows you the end of a thing, and he didn't show you the process. And so people get frustrated, thinking that God lied or, or, or they're, they're impatient. When God has a process, to carry us through whenever he gives us a promise. A promise, Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. Yeah, I can't even have one. You're making me a great nation. But, but God is faithful to his promise. And God will fulfill his promise. God will fulfill his promise. So his faithfulness is true. And so Abraham might not see the end result. But whatever God has promised, that he is able to do. Let's put in my some charge on my, my, my equipment. So in this church age, God is speaking out from among the Gentile, a people for his name. So the church is seen in this pictorial depiction as being in the valley. You see Calvary. You see the, uh, the point to Calvary, you see the rise of the Antichrist and all these others, but in the valley, this gap is where we believe that the church age is, the church age 
age is the age that we're now in, where we are experiencing God's grace that we can come, the whosoever will, the wicked, the bad, the cruel, the whosoever will. It's not his will that any should perish. Every single human being have a chance to be saved. Doesn't matter who you are, but you have to make sure you accept the grace of God that has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, because people don't want to accept the part of grace. They want to accept the part of grace that says, for by grace are you saved and you can do anything you want to do. No, grace teaches us in this age that there is a life to live. There is a cross to bear. Amen. And the man will come up to me and let him what? Deny himself, take up his cross. And for many people, it's more than one cross. Take up his crosses and follow me. There is a call in this aid for you and I, for you and I to be ready because God has set this space in time and eternity for us to be saved. So the church triumphant is made up of both Jews and Gentiles, anyone who accepts and the Messiah, Christ's death for our sins and confess that he has brought salvation, has this chance to be saved. The question is, my friend, my brother, my sister, are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Have you been baptized into the body? Can you forevermore declare that I am a part of the body of Christ? And so I, I have no fear of what death will do to me. I have no fear of what man can do to me because I am a part of this body. The church is real and a brethren. It's not just a building. As we have realized by now, it's not just a building because if it was a building, then we wouldn't be online now. Right, because we'd have to get into a building, but it is a organism, it's a living organism. It is a set of people whom God has prepared and is preparing to meet him when he comes to receive man at his second coming or at the rapture of the church. And Sister Yvonne did a very beautiful picture of the rapture. Um, and um, a very good explanation and detailed instruction as to how to be a part of the rapture. So the church spirit is now where you and I, Gentiles and Jews, Jews are Gentiles who accept the word and the word of Christ's death, can now have a chance to be saved. And it's a very, it's, it's, it's over 2,000 years and people say, well, from my, from my eyes were at my knee, I heard that Jesus is coming and we haven't seen nothing yet. Well, my eyes were never at my knee. Amen. My eyes were never at my knee, brethren. But I know for certainty that Jesus is coming back. Are you prepared? Are you prepared to meet him when he comes? Are you prepared to say, Lord, here I am. I give myself to you. So this gap then between the 6th and 9th and the 7th week, let's kind of bring back your minds then together. First, we'll have a seven-year or seven-week period, right, for 90 years. Then we'll have a 62-week period. And then we have the gap that we just mentioned, which is the church age. And, um, and then after that, we're going to have the 7th week where we will have it divided into two, three-and-a-half-year period known as Daniel's 70th week. So moving right along then, we get another pictorial view of what it will look like as we um, battle through this time that God has. We have the times of the Gentiles. I mentioned a while ago that God is speaking out from among the Gentiles, a people for his name. Um, and it blindness in part has happened to Israel till the fullness of the Gentile be come in. Now, the fullness of the Gentile, there are two terms, and I think I mentioned it before, two terms, 
times of the Gentile and the fullness of the Gentile. Now, if you're looking at my screen, the times of the Gentile really speak from the time of Nebuchadnezzar right down to the Battle of Armageddon, that period where the rule of the Gentile, or in other words, the Gentile have a uphold, a hold on the Jews, and the Jews are not at liberty to do what they want or under God's theocratic rule. But the Gentiles have a hold on them. That's the time of Gentile. So you have um, Babylon, Media Persia, you have um, Greece, then you have Rome. And then in the end time, we believe that the Roman, the revised Roman Empire, which will be the foot of the beast, will come again. And it will be this final world government that will be smashed at the feet and usher in the new, the new period of 1,000 years, when at the Battle of Armageddon, that feet of that beast will finally be smashed and will usher in the new period where God is now sitting on the throne and is ruling Israel, where every nation will be required to come and to make offering at Jerusalem in the millennial period of a thousand years. Amen. I wish I could say, are there any questions? I could say so. Now, when did the church period start? So we have Jesus who is cut off in the middle of the week. And you will say, well, how is it that he was cut off in the middle of a week? Uh, if you look at it in a real good sense, you will realize that Jesus wasn't, Jesus was crucified on Good Friday. Amen? Jesus was not crucified on Good Friday. It must have been based on the facts that he was crucified in the midst of the week. It's more likely Wednesday. So what are you saying? So how come a Sabbath is is on Wednesday. Well, remember now, when you go to Leviticus chapter 23, you will find the feast days being coming. And Pentecost, Pentecost was a feast day. 40 days after, um, 40 days period, 50 day period would bring us to Pentecost. That would be a feast day. That would be a Sabbath. But before Pentecost, the Passover, at the Passover supper, there, is, there was always going to be what is known as a high Sabbath, a high Sabbath. So if you look at when the, the Bible said that Jesus was crucified and they had to hasten to take on his body because of the Sabbath, it was that it was Friday. It was that it was the high Sabbath that was to follow the Passover lamb slain. And so it, Jesus was crucified on no good Friday. Amen. They want to make Friday good, make Friday good. But it must have been that he was killed in the middle of the week. And we could go to, to the details. And I, I see some of you perk it up to look at it. But do a little more research on it. And you find out that Good Friday was just a part of a pagan practice that they now incorporated in, 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 um, in the Christian worship as they tried to usher in that period that was celebrated by Nimrod and his, and his host. And they tried to combine those religious practices together. And so Good Friday was seen as, as a Good Friday that Jesus was crucified. But Jesus was crucified on a Friday. He was crucified in the midst of the week, in the midst of the week. Um, and some would hasten to say, well, that midst of the week really mean he was crucified in the second half, in the middle of the 70th week. And there, that's that theory. There's that theory that that midst of the week really referred to the midst of the 70th week, right? Because you have pre-tribulation rapture. Make a note of that. And I'm coming back to the times of the Gentiles and the fullness of the Gentile. You have pre-tribulation pre rapture, which may mean that the rapture will come before the tribulation. You have mid-tribulation rapture, which means the rapture will come in the midst of the week. And then you have post-tribulation rapture, which means the rapture will come after the tribulation. Those are the three theories that are out there. We embrace the pre-tribulation rapture, where we believe that God will come to take his bride out before the unleash. And we go to 1 Timothy, where it says that he who now let will let until he be taken out. 
then shall that man or that evil be revealed. Because we believe then that it's the only thing that is stopping the Antichrist from taking his full reign. The only thing that can stop the Antichrist from taking his full position is the church, the Holy Ghost in the church. The Holy Ghost in the church is the restrainer. As soon as the Holy Ghost is taken out of the church, then brother, sister, friend, you don't want to be here because after that, all hell break loose. All hell will break loose. And if you are still here after the rapture, you're going to be facing the periods that will come in with the rise of the Antichrist. Um, and we're not going to jump ahead to say you will not be able to buy or sell during that time unless you take the mark. That we'll hasten to say, get ready, get ready. Make sure you are part of the rapture. So we said the fullness of the, 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 the times of the Gentile speaks of Gentiles' domination over Israel. And that is a political term. Now the religious term is the one that we refer to in Romans 11 verse 25 where the fullness of the Gentile speaks to the time of the rapture when God is complete picking out the Gentiles as a people. Um, in that same chapter 11, Paul laments that the fact that the, 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 the olive tree, uh, um, we have been engrafted, unnatural branches have been engrafted in the olive tree and so we are not by birth Jews, but we have become spiritual Jews by being engrafted into the natural thing. But the Bible says that when God is finished dealing with the Gentile, he will return to deal with Israel as a nation. Remember the call of Israel. When God called them, God married to them in the wilderness. They say we will. And, 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 and so they were to be a nation of priests that were to be God's witnesses in the earth. They were the ones that should spread the message of the one God and is the man for worship. And they fail on that. But God is again going to return to deal with them as a nation. And uh, God help you if, you if you're still a Gentile. Amen. Amen. So the rapture of the church, brethren, is eminent. You and I have got to get ourselves together, get ourselves together. Because what was the purpose of Daniel getting this vision then? What was it for? Was it God just having a time to, to, to um, appear to him? Or what was it all about? Understand that the vision that Daniel got was really to speak to him about his people, his land and the temple. All three things were in relation to this, this revelation. So it had nothing to do with the Gentile. It was Daniel's people, Daniel's land, and Daniel's temple. And that is Jewish by, by virtue. And so when he got this vision, he realized and we, we, that's how we embrace this, this gap. Because in this spirit, God is really talking, working, developing a church that is not pure Jew. It's a combination of both Jews and Gentiles. So that basically would kind of give us an overall view of Daniel's 70 week. And you want now to understand that how does this fit into the whole picture? Because Daniel went into um, captivity it was a 70-year captivity because of their disobedience. And while they were there in this captivity, there are a number of things that happened. And Ella Russell will be picking up to look at how that the 70, that um, the 70 period, God would appear to one of the wickedest kings and gave him a vision of the end time, gave him a vision of the times, the ages and the times. And God would again give Daniel, another vision that correlates with this vision of these periods of kings and kingdoms that would reign. And then we go to the, to, to the book of Revelation, where the book of Revelation now sees the 
fulfillment of some of these things that Daniel. In other words, Daniel is the prophetic book of the Old Testament and the Revelation is a prophetic book of the New Testament. So both of them correlate and, and it couldn't be coincident that they're able to bring the information together so beautifully. It had to be God. So God who spoke in olden days and, and to the prophets as in these last days spoken to us through his son. So I'm going to pause and give Ella Ruska a chance to introduce what he's about to take us into after we have looked at this Daniel's 70th week. Are you there, Elder? Give him a chance to brush his teeth. Are you there, Elder? Yes, I'm here. God bless you. Amen. Um, you want me to introduce the... Yeah, the, what you're coming up with next. So what we're going to be looking at, praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. Thank you so much, Ella Edwards. So what we are going to be looking at and which we think that is very, very profound uh, for us to get an understanding of where we are and where we are coming from. And this is part of what we have to look at, where we are coming from, how this thing developed, how this thing started and why God brought us um, this um, understanding. It is so important, ladies and gentlemen, that you know we are talking about the end time. We are talking about our future destination. We are talking about our salvation, basically. That if we miss the raptures, as uh, Moulton says, you know, is one rapture and that's it. So we'll be looking to see where we are at Nebuchadnezzar vision. And I I see where Ella Edwards, when he was sharing his his screen. He show you that image, and we'll be going through um, um, Nebuchadnezzar vision and of the future. So he saw the timeline, the times of the Gentile. Can you remember? You know, Israel was a world power as well. You know, when they went in the Promised Land, they were the biggest, baddest thing in town. But, but through disobedience and you know unfaithfulness, God had to kind of humble them. And one new thing that He used. To humble them, ladies and gentlemen, was allowing the Gentiles to have control over them. So we'll be looking at the vision that God will give. And, and this is what too, um, Ella Edwards, that we can't put God in a box. And this and this was the trouble that Habakkuk had. Because Habakkuk was saying, How can a how can a Gentile nation this is, how can a Gentile nation um humble? the people of God. We are called by his name. We are the Jewish people. And that was a struggle for the for the man. You know, he couldn't understand that these barbaric, vicious, wicked people will come to humble us. But God said, look, I'm going to use, I'm going to use um, Nebuchadnezzar um, as a rod of correction. And so when they were brought into Babylon, God will show a Gentile king the coming, his coming, the timeline from the times of the Gentile to right down to the end time. So that's one vision. Another thing that Ella Edwards mentioned and that we are going to look, be looking at is also Daniel's vision and what the true intent of what Nebuchadnezzar saw. And so we have to um, put that in perspective, ladies and gentlemen, that um, God gave two visions. They, they, in, they intertwine, they overlap, but they do explain um, what we are looking to, to um, what we are looking to see. And so it's very important, ladies and gentlemen, that we understand these these two um, prudent studies because it is our our it is our destination it is our future we're looking at it is our salvation if we if we mess this up you know as Ella it was a speaker and he was looking at the the the, the um the seventieth week that sixty nine weeks and this is how we know ladies and gentlemen that God is not playing around because even historians 
even people who don't have no Holy Ghost, even people who don't serve God, even people who don't believe that there is a God, substantiate the historical narrative that Ella Edwards just present of what happened after the Babylonians were overthrown and the commandment went forth. So this is how you know that the seven, that Daniel seventy week Daniel seventy weeks is not just one little prophecy that is there and, and it not fulfilled. It has been fulfilled. We know that the temple has been built. We know that the walls have been built. And we know that the Messiah, right? Whether you want to look at Jesus Christ as a historical man or the prophet or what have you, we know that that event, that the crucifixion, happened. Because we know that the Roman Empire came when um came with this capital punishment called the crucifixion. So this is not no Anansi story we are coming with, ladies and gentlemen. This is what um the Lord has revealed to us as his servants. In you know, he says that you know what he, he what he shows, he said he calls us um friends. And not servants, because uh, you know a servant don't know what the, his Lord um, um, do it. So, so we are now privy into looking into the future, seeing what God has showed us. And so, you know, it's time for us to get ready. It's time for us, Amen. Praise God to really have that introspection every day, every week, even this morning. That introspection shall be. Should be happening in our life and say because it's only as Sister Moulton say it's only one rapture. There's not that there's not a second one. If you miss the rapture, brethren, this is it. That's it, brethren. You can't call upon nobody. You can't call upon prophetess to come pray for you. You can't call upon uh, evangelist to start to come lay a hand on you. That's it, brethren, because everybody gone leave you. And so when we look at the study of the 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 um the image that we are going to be looking at we're going to look at the the rise of the babylonians we're going to be looking at the the Medes and the persian and why they were called the Medes and the persian we're going to look at the grecian empire amen praise god we're going to look at the roman empire and all these em world empires ladies and gentlemen have left their footprints even in this modern time even in this modern time, we are we are still enjoying or grappling with what the Babylonians left us, with what the, the Medes and the Persians left us, with what the, the, the Grecian Empire left us. And most profoundly, what the last empire, the Roman Empire, how profound the Roman Empire was upon the world. Like even up to this day, ladies and gentlemen, we are still dealing with the things from the Roman Empire. It was that um, profound for us. But there was another vision and that vision showed us the true intent of it. So we'll be, so we'll be looking at those, um, at those studies. So you, we can't afford to miss any one of these presentations because it will help us and put us in a place and perspective where God can speak to us and help us um, to get ready. So, brethren, let us, amen, praise God, as the Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing because, you know, if, we, if in time to come, we will reap if we faint not. This is not no the time to backslide. This is not the time no to give up. This is not the no the time to say you know what I can't bother. I can't bother with this thing too much. This is not the time to do that because we're going to be looking also, as Ella Edwards was saying, um, you know the, the news for those of you who still read the newspaper. I know some of you read online the newspaper. What have you? You know the reports online. You're going to see, brethren how this thing is being developed because we know we are in, we are going into a next generation what they call the the gen zers and the gen zers are I think, totally different from the millennials totally different from generation x the gen zers right now um are affecting change in the world in the world brethren 
not just in their own country, the world, the Gen Zers are coming up now. And we're going to see as we we look at these uh, modern day happenings, how um, it, it impacts what we are looking at today. We are looking at the economy, the, the world economy at this point, right? We're going to be looking at the at the 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 whole um, climate and whole. I, I, this is this is one subject that you don't need a lot of explanation on because you know you're experiencing the climate climate change. I was a elder. I was in Jamaica, uh, and I don't, I never know Jamaica could get so hot. And even, even Jamaicans are complaining about the place getting hot. <laughs> and we're going to be looking at what impact that has on... Elder, oh. Elder Russell? Yes, please. Ma um, no, say it over. Jamaica is, I told somebody, I think hell has opened up in Jamaica. <laughs> it passed hot. It, it's stifling down here. Can't breathe. I know, I know, I know, evangelist. And, and let me tell you, Bertrand. This don't just happen out of the blue. It is not. Don't let people tell you and say, oh, you know, it's hot. I, I just, this, no, I should the sun, I shine hot. And, you know, the breeze is now blue or like one time. And, no, brethren, no. The earth is telling us. The earth is testifying to us to get ready because something is about to happen. That's what the earth is preaching to us. The earth is telling us that something is about to happen. And so when we look at these climatic conditions, the monsoon, my God, when we're going to get, when we get into that study, we, you're going to see that all of these, the economy, the climatic condition, the, the, the social changes that are happening in our schools, the, the social engineering that is going on is pointing to one thing. So we're going to be, taking that, that journey from Nebuchadnezzar's image that he saw in Daniel chapter 2 and come right through, that runs right through Daniel's vision of the true intent of those, um, of Nebuchadnezzar's dream, come right through the 70th um, fulfillment, the 69 weeks that have been, been fulfilled, coming right down to the last week that Elder Ed was able, was able to tell us that we are now in this period and we are going to repeat it. We are, you're going to hear it until this study come to an end, that we are now in this period between the 69th and the 70th week where, where God is picking out, picking out a people for his name. So despite all your issues, Despite all of your problems that you have, despite all of the, 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 the prior requests that you're sending up right now, you want God to release you and deliver you, all that is good, and God will, will answer prior. But make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that you are picked. Make sure that you are chosen, because many are called, but few are chosen, because there's a church within the church. There is a number with that number in the church. Are you in that number? And that is what the question we have to ask. We have to clean up. You, the prophet said, break up your fallow ground. It's not, it's not for joke that the, the prophet says say that. And all the pressures that we are facing is to distract us from all the problems that you have right now, brethren, is a distraction. So we have to have a head screw on, a spiritual head screw on our body that we have to multitask. We have to multitask what God is, is, is showing us and multitask what we are going through as life will throw challenges to us, ladies and gentlemen. So we have to know, brethren, right now as we are here, we have to have our eyes open. We can't go to sleep. We can't sleep on this one, brethren. You can't sleep. You know, you can't sleep on other things, but this one you can't sleep on because I'm telling the brethren, the, I don't have to talk about nothing else. The earth, the earth, the, this big planet called the earth is telling us God is coming back. Not just in Jamaica, this thing happening, brethren. Not just in America here, because in America here, brethren, the, the weather all over the place, all over the place. The weather is all over the place. And 
I don't want to frighten my Floridians down there. But scientists now are looking at Florida and that Florida is sinking. <laughs> God of mercy. Hmm? But it now sink with honor before the rapture comes. They say that Florida is sinking, that Florida is going to go below sea level. That is what's going on, right? And so we have to know and make that decision. We, and if you're not saved, brethren, and you're under the sound of our voice, brethren, go find one apostolic Holy Ghost church and go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because God is picking out a people for his name. So but Elder, me, do you remember that movie that they made way back when called 2012? 2012. Go watch it back. Go watch back 2012. That movie not normal, you know, sir. It's not 